So it says respond true or false to be able to justify your answer. If the graph y equals f of x has an x-intercept at x equals a, then the graph blah 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 has an x-intercept at that. Um, do you need help with all of these? Um, not really. Uh, maybe yeah. number one, number two, and number eight. Okay, so let's just visualize this. If the graph has an x-intercept that x equals a, so here's a, so there's an x-intercept, then the graph of y equals f of x plus h, so you're, um, you're shifting it, where does this shift it? I don't know. Remember the shifting, it shifts at left H units. Okay. Has an X intercept of X equals A minus H. So yeah, it shifts at left H units. Oh, so okay. this value would be A minus H. So I would say that that's true. All right. Cause it's, it's shifting, right? That this is just yeah. a shift left unit, left X units. Unless there's some, you know, the fact that it, 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 if it's continuous or not, or they didn't say that it was continuous function. So I'm trying to think if there's a way that that function, if, if that would affect continuity. But I think it's, I think everything's shifting left. So I think true would be the answer there. Do you have the answer key for this? No. Oh, well, you don't. Not, not, not I, 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 yeah. Seems, seems like true is, but like I said, you're doing con continuity and limits. So sometimes they say that would be true if the function was a continuous function. But if it's not a continuous, then you can't shift it, blah, blah, blah. But I'm pretty sure that you didn't, they didn't give you any other intercept information except that it's a function. And the x-intercept is, is here at A. And that the other function is just shifted left two units. So then, yeah, that would be A minus H. I would say yes. Yeah. The cotangent is an odd function. Well, a cotangent, an odd function, there's a couple of things you can do for odd functions. Do you remember that odd functions satisfy the um, equation F of negative X equals negative F of X? Uh, no, I didn't remember that. That's one thing. Another another thing is that odd functions are symmetric about the x act about the origin. So you can do it either one of those ways. You can look at the cotangent function and you can ask yourself, is the cotangent of negative x the same as negative cotangent of x? And you can actually look at your formula sheets for this if you have formula sheets, because it's probably on there. Or you can use your um, the graph of the cotangent function. And the graph of the cotangent function would look like, um, I'll put this on the next page. No, I won't. The graph, I'll draw it up here. The graph of your cotangent function, if you remember um, the the tangent function goes through the origin zero zero mm -hmm. the sine is zero, right and it does this so that one is going to be an odd function i believe but the cotangent function is shifted over so it's right here do you remember that yeah the cotangent function looks like this actually no nope, it looks like this i believe so it does not it is not reflexive about the origin, I do not believe, because reflexive about the origin means you flip it here and then you flip it here and you'll get back to it. Well, well, actually, no, maybe it is. If you flip it about the x-axis and then about the y-axis, are you going to get back to the same? Because remember, this graph does this. It repeats. So if I flip this about the x, about the y axis first, then it'll be like this. And if I flip it about the x axis, then it'll be, yeah, I think it is. I think it is. Yeah, I think so too. It looks like it's odd. And then again, if you're not sure, you can take what's the cotangent of negative x. 
So the cotangent of, let's say, negative 30, is that equal to the negative cotangent of 30? So negative 30 degrees, if you look at your unit circle. Um, let me, I think I have the unit circle right here. Images. There's my unit circle. So the cotangent is the cosine over the sine. So it's the X over the Y. That's not a very clear unit circle, right? I'm just gonna delete that. But do you remember the unit circle? The cotangent is, cotangent is equal to X over Y. Oh, yeah. well, it's, uh, co it's cosine over sine, which is your X coordinate over your, over, over your Y coordinate on your unit circle. So 30 degrees, 30 degrees was root three over two comma one half. So the cotangent of 30 is gonna be the X divided by the Y, which is root 30. So is the cotangent of negative 30, negative 30 would be, the only difference is it goes down negative X. So that's a negative square root of three, right? Is that the same as negative cotangent of 30? And it is, it's the negative square root of three. Now that's just one example. So that doesn't mean it's true for everything, but that just helps me remember or understand, oh yeah, it's always gonna work that way. So the answer is yes, it is an odd function. Or you just memorize the fact that it's an odd function or you memorize this formula. You look at this formula for your, from your unit circle or from your uh, trig functions, trig formulas. And in fact, it'll call them odd functions. It'll say odd function formula, even odd formulas. Mm -hmm. And cotangent negative X equals negative cotangent of X. All right. Yeah. Which other ones do you need from this? Uh, number eight. The function f of x equals int of x over two is continuous. I believe this is an integer. Yeah, it is. Over, so that just jumps to whatever the integer is. Um, does that mean it jumps to the next integer higher? I forget, or lower. I don't remember what the int function does. Yeah, that's what I, um, that's what the, I didn't know. That's what I was asking. Uh, yeah, I don't remember. I think it, I think it is a ceiling function, not a floor function, meaning it jumps to the next higher one. Yeah, I know it. I know it's piecewise function. Let me see. Int function definition. The int function returns the integer part of a decimal number by rounding down. Okay, so it's a floor, not a ceiling. It returns the in it returns the integer part. So it just rounds down. Not up. Yeah, I think so. I think that's right. So the function blank is continuous at x equals 2.3. And the answer would be yes, it would be continuous at that point because everything around 2.3 Everything from two, including two, all the way to three, not including three, everything from there, if, if X is a part of any of those, then your Y is going to be equal to two. So it's a step, it's a step function, right? And it looks like this. When X is, when X is here, it does that. When X is here, at one, it goes like that. At two, it goes like that. Mm -hmm. That makes sense? Yeah. So at 2.3, is it continuous? That's 2.3. Is it continuous at 2.3? Yes, at that point it's continuous, whoops. But not at all the points. Not, not at this point, it's not continuous. At the end point, it's not. But in the middle, it is continuous. Yeah. Make sense? Uh-huh. Okay, now these formulas, which ones you need help with? Um, I don't really need, 
I think the integer one. Again, the integer one. You're good with the trig ones. You know the tricks. Um, no, the... I also I also need. I'm good with those ones. I just need help with number twelve and the twelve and fourteen. Okay, so what's the what's the little trick about the the limits of trig functions? What what are the two tricks that you know to do? Um, sine x over x tends to one, and tan x over x tends to one. You said tan x over x. Yeah, and sine x over x. Okay, and is there? Um, I feel like there's a cosine minus one or something. Yeah, like I don't know. I don't know one for cosine. I, I heard that there was, but we didn't like. I don't think I had, like. It wasn't really something that we practiced, so I don't know. Okay, well, let's see if we can turn this into a tan x. What's tan x over? What's the tan x over x the same as? That's like sine x over x over cosine x. Yeah. All divided by x. Uh huh. So that's like. Um. That is like the same as saying sine x over x cosine x. Yeah. And this already we know goes to one. Mm -hmm. So that's why the other one goes to one. That's why the tangent goes to one. So that doesn't really help. Well, what, 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 is, the, what is the cosine of zero? The cosine of zero is... Um... It's, it's zero, one. right? No, sorry, no it's, it's, one. it's one. The sine of zero is zero. And that's the reason this one, the proof for this fact right here is, is this is indeterminate because the limit, this is really the limit as X goes to zero for this, right? The limit as this goes to zero, well, if, if this is zero, then it's gonna be zero. And if this is zero, that's zero. Zero over zero is indeterminate, which means you can't just determine it by plugging it in. Yeah. And so there's a proof that shows that this, in fact, equals one. It's not undefined. It doesn't equal zero. Same with this one. Right. But the other one, this one right here is just one over zero. And what's one over zero? Is one over zero indeterminate or is it undefined? It's, uh, it's undefined. It's yeah, it's does not exist. Mm -hmm. So that would be does not exist. Mm -hmm. That makes sense? Yeah. Okay, how about, what was the other one you wanted? 14. 14, okay. So now for this one, we're doing the in integer of X minus X. Mm -hmm. So, and, and it's as, as X goes to two from the left. So let's think about what this function is going to look like. The integer of X, I'll graph this in red. We just did this, right? The integer of X looks like this. Mm -hmm. There's one. There's two. All right. And there's three. All right. So mm -hmm. if, so that's the integer of X and then X is just X, right? It just does this. Mm -hmm. Got it. So the integer of X, I'll do this in green. The integer minus X, let's graph it. Zero minus zero is zero. That point is zero. But now it's, it's gonna be this minus zero. So it's gonna be this, right? All of these are just going to be here. And then one, whoops, one minus. Um, so, so the integer at one is one minus one is zero. So it's going to jump back down to here. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. And then the integer at two, or the integer of 1.3, let's say, minus 1.3 is going to be a net. Oh, hold on. Did I do that right? The integer of 0 0.5 is zero minus point. Oh no, I did that wrong. Those are, not, those are not there. Let's just do this step-by-step step here. Let's, let's do a T chart. Mm -hmm. 
that'll help us. Okay. So at mm -hmm. zero, the in, this is y equals the integer of x minus x. So the inner, what's the integer at, at zero? That's my red line, right? Yeah. That was zero, right? Minus mm -hmm. zero is zero minus zero. 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 Good. Good. How about 0. 0.5? What's the integer of 0. 0.5? Zero. It's zero. Good. Minus 0. 0.5 is going to be negative 0. 0.5, right? Yeah. How about yeah. at 0. 0.9? It's going to be negative 0. 0.9, right? So it's actually yeah. going to do this, right? It's going to go down like that. Yeah. And, and then how about at one? What's the integer at one? One. It's one. So what's one minus one? Zero. Zero. So it pops back to there. Got it. Now, mm -hmm. how about at 1.5? What's the integer at 1.5? One. It's one minus 1.5, which is? Minus 0.5. Negative 0.5. Do you get what's happening? So how about yeah. at 1.9? It's going to be negative 0.9, right? So it's going to do this again. All right. And then it's going to jump back to two. And then what's it going to do? It's going to do that again. It's going to do that again. Do you follow? Do you follow what's yeah. happening? Good. Yeah. So these are open circles here. So that's what this graph looks like. So now the question is this. What's the limit as X approaches two from the left? What's the limit as X approaches two from the left? It doesn't exist. No, what's the limit? What would you expect it to be? So let's go left of two. What would you expect it to be? Two. Not two. If you jump on here. Oh, negative you, one, negative one. You'd, you'd expect it to be negative one. Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, that makes sense how we figured that out? Yeah. All right. More of the next page. Uh, let's see the next page. All right. Which one do you want from this? Mm -hmm. Okay. I think these two are fine. Uh, go on to page four. Sorry. That's okay. Uh, number 18. 18, it says let f of x equal ax plus b if x is if x is between 0 and 1 and 1 if it's greater than 1. Determine if a and b so that f is continuous everywhere. So we want to basically make so we want to basically make A and B work out so that when I plug in when I plug in zero, I want AX plus B. When I plug in zero, I want it to equal this one up here, negative one. Mm -hmm. Got it? And when I and then when I plug in one, I want AX plus B when I plug in one to equal this over here. Sorry, one. So we're gonna just write an equation. And our equation is going to be, so let's con let's convert these. So A times zero is zero plus B equals negative one. So we know what B has to be, right? Mm -hmm. And then A times one plus B, and what's B again? We just figured it out. It's negative one, right? It has to equal one. See how I did that? Yeah. So A equals two. Yeah, I think that's what I got when I did it. I just wanted to make sure I was doing it correctly. So two, uh, and now let's check. Two X, um, two X minus one equals, or F, F of X equals two X minus one. So mm -hmm. now when we, uh, obviously when we plug in zero, we're got, we want it to equal this number. And when we plug in one, we want it to equal that number so that it's between there. And that's exactly what we'll get. When we plug in zero, we're going to get negative one. So it's going to be, so everything left of this, here's what was happening. 
everything left of zero was negative one, right? And everything yeah. right, everything right of one, here's one, everything right of one was positive one, including one. Oh, and also including zero, right? So in, including zero with that. So we needed to fill in this gap here with the line AX plus B. That's what we were trying to do. We're trying to fill in that gap with that line. And that's why we did what we did. Hmm. So that's that equation. It kind of connects the dots, so to speak. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, which other one you want? We got time for for one more. Um, can you go back to page three? Mm -hmm. I want to go over 16 D. Okay. D it says find the limit as X goes approaches three of G of F of X. So it says the limit of as x approaches three of f of x is three and the limit is x approaches three of g of x is negative two and g is continuous at three. Mm -hmm. um, so What's the, okay, so here's what we do, I believe. I think we're going to do, what's the limit as X approaches three of F of X? And then we're going to take the limit as X approaches three of G of X, of G of that. So the limit as X approaches three of F of X is three. Mm -hmm. So now I have what's the limit as X approaches three of G of three. So limit as X approaches, so G of three. Oh, so we'll have to substitute three into G. Yeah, I'm trying. I'm trying to think if that's what we have to do. I'm not sure if I have to do that. Do you have like an algebra? Is there a form, do you get formula for the algebra of limits? Uh, no, I don't. Let me do a real quick search here. But you probably do have it in your book somewhere. Um, there's probably an algebra of limits formulas that exist. I just don't know them off the top of my head. Yeah, right here. Oh yeah, yeah. That's what I was using for the rest of these. Now, do you? Yeah, that's what out. That's called algebra of limits. Do you see a function composition in there? Uh, no. Yeah, I don't see functional composition in there. I think that wait, if you go back um, to the not to like the PowerPoint. Uh... To the do you have it in there? Do you have? I think form? it is. I think there are, uh, no, I think that the value of, the, I think the value of the function is given. Yeah, there... the, the value of the function was negative two, but. No, not like the value, but like the actual function is given, I think. Like, um, if you look at B, it says X squared minus nine X minus three. No, I don't think that is, I don't think that's the function. I think that's just an, another function that they're putting in there. I don't know how then. There, there's a, there's a, these, see these rules here? Those are the ones you would use for all the other ones. I just don't see a rule for functional composition. And I don't know what it is off the top of my head. Algebra of limits here. Let me type in function composition.
limit of, of composition is the composition of the limits provided the outside function is continuous at the limit of the inside function. So there's the, there it is. The limit of a composition is the composition of the limits. Mm -hmm. So the limit of a composition is the composition of the limits. So the limit, so see how we have a composition here of functions mm -hmm. is the the limit of a composition of functions is the composition of the limits, which is what I've written out here. Yeah. Is the composition of the limits. So I'm trying to, I'm trying to interpret that, what that means. The limit of a composition is the how do I compose those two limits? Because neither one of them is a function. You know what I'm saying? There's no X in here. I mean, they're functions, they're constant functions. They're constants. Okay. How do you find the limit of a composition? If the images help out. There we go. Do you see that one? Yeah. The limit as X goes to C of F of G of X is equal to F of the limit as X goes to C of G of X. Mm Okay. Okay, so you put in the limit for g of x, or like you put in the limit for the first function. I think, isn't that what we did? Mm hmm. Mm hmm. But I'm trying to figure out what the limit as x goes to 3 of g of 3 is. I think the answer is negative 2. Yeah, I think so. But it's hard for me to interpret this. F of L equals F of L. The function at L. So I think it's just F. I think it's just G of three. All right. But we don't know what G of three is. It just says it's continuous at three, but we don't know what the function value is. Oh, no, it is. It's negative two. No, 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 no. No, hold on. Is that right? Oh, no, it's, yeah, it is, because it says F is continuous. So doesn't that have to be the limit? It's F. Okay, okay, hold up. So here's what they're saying. They're saying that the limit as X goes to L of F of X is F of L. So we're talking about the limit as X goes to three of f of x is so the limit as x goes to three okay we have the limit as x goes to three of g of x is negative two so negative two is our f of l yeah i think it's negative two i believe it's negative two Yeah, I think the answer is negative two, but it's hard for me to put that exactly. 
to say that that's exactly what they did, but I believe that's the correct answer. Mm -hmm. You don't have a formula that we're given that showed that? Like a formula for that that showed a little bit more basic way than this. This is a little bit more difficult to follow. No, I don't have anything else. Oh, here we go. If F is continuous at X and X equals B and the limit of A, blah, 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 then the limit as X goes to A of, yeah, this is a little bit better, of F of G of X is F of B. So I think it is, maybe it's F of B. I think it's F of B. I, th I think the answer is F of three. Mm -hmm. or, or let's see. No, hold on. The limit as X goes to A of G of X. So our, we have our G of X and F of X are mixed up. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So they didn't actually... The G... So the answer should be... G of B, G of I'm confused because our F of our F and X are kind of mixed up. Our F of X and G of X are kind of mixed up. Let me see if I can make a copy of this. Okay. I'm going to, I'm going to take a picture of this. Okay. And let's see, how do I do that? Done. How do I copy it? Copy. All right. That's a trick I learned and I haven't done it in a while. Okay. Now I'm going to paste it. Mm -hmm. oh. Oh, that didn't work. Let's try that again. Taking a picture. I'm going to put this picture in. I'm going to say done. Save to photos. Now I'm going to add that photo. Uh, it gave me the whole photo, not just part of it, but that's okay. There's my formula. Mm -hmm. um, come on. That's the formula I want to use right there. Okay. Uh -huh. Yeah. So, but we have but our, our F and G are mixed up. Right. We have, so it says if F is continuous at, so if, if G is continuous, I'm going to rewrite this at x equals three and the limit as x goes to three is it three that i want three three equals b then the limit as X goes to, what was my A? Three, my A and B are both three. Of, of G of F of X equals G of the limit as X goes to three of F of X, which equals F, sorry, G of, three yeah yeah so i think the answer is just g of three i don't think it's negative two i think it's g of three but see we don't know what that is so we can't answer anything more than just g of three i i feel like that's the answer g of three you know what i'm saying 
But I don't, I don't know if that's negative two, because remember the limit G of three is not necessarily negative two. the limit of it's negative two, but. Hmm. Yeah, I, I don't know. I'm sorry, Mayher. I wish I could be okay. more, I wish I could be uh, more clear, but I, I don't really totally understand the question. It's okay. I'll ask my teacher about this one. Yeah, I would ask him about that one because there's probably the, the answer is either negative two or or G of three. But I don't know that I don't know that uh, those are the same thing. I don't think those are necessarily the same thing. Yeah. Sound good?